Welcome back friends, in this video we're going to add a traditional sticky to the web page so I mean a little area where you can enter some text and save it between page loads I mean like a sticky that you put on your computer after you write a note, correct? The only difference is that it's going to be on a web page and both function the same way Okay, so first of all make sure you place a cursor after the closing div tag here and before the form tag where it closes and I'm going to add a new div so this div will contain a text area. I will say the following here. Div ID. And I'm going to say sticky. And I'm giving it an ID because we want to manipulate it in jQuery. All right. And again, just because we want everything to be consistent in terms of appearance, I'm going to give it the same name as element. Remember in the style sheet, we have a class named element. Remember that. In HTML, multiple elements can be applied with the same style sheet using a class. So that gives the user interface a consistent feel. Okay, class element, and then at the next stage here, I'll type the following style, and then position absolute. And remember, I'm putting this here because we'll make this a movable item. And as you might remember from our previous video, this ensures that the item doesn't drift down the page between page loads okay that's why i'm putting style position absolute that's the reason for that remember the basic vocabulary right class is like an attribute element is a value style is an attribute position absolute is a value id is an attribute that's a value and so on so those are property value pairs that's it and style sheets think about it border is a property that there's a value property value same logical role the only difference is here, you know, these things are called attributes. But to me, logically, I don't know, they're about the same. So we've got this div, and now we're going to make use of it. Take a look. I'm going to type text area. That's a basic HTML element. And I'm going to say ID. I'm going to call it here TXT sticky. So TXT for text. And up here, I'm going to rename this so it says div sticky, so you don't get confused. So one is a div, the other one is a text area. And I'm going to give it some attributes. I'm going to say, for example, here, calls. That means columns equals 20. Another attribute value pair, rows, that equals 10. Style, so that it looks like a real, basically, note, right? The yellow kind, the traditional one. I'm going to say the following. I will say background color and then yellow. And you'll see it looks pretty much the same. And then after that, I'm going to add one more nice feature, which is a spell check, set that equal to true. All of these things exist. You just type them and set their values. That's it. This is our text area. The columns, rows, style, background, color, yellow. So it looks like a real sticky. And again, friends, if you don't understand the purpose of something, well, when you type up your version of the code, just don't type it. Run it. See what the result is. And then put it in and see what the change is. It's an experiment with the purpose of each item one at a time. That's all. Okay. So if I run this at this stage, let me take a look at what we have. See whether we've got something useful in some way. Okay, so we do have a sticky, right? A big one, nice. That's good. And notice this is already expandable. See that? That's good. Right, it's got a decent looking border. Now obviously it has some additional problems. First of all, it can't be dragged just yet. And if I input some text, well, notice that this gets underlined red immediately. So if you right click, it says you can change the spelling. So hit good. Well, that's good, right? Okay, let's see. And it moves around inside this uh, text area. That's good. If you move it close enough, it even gives you little uh, scroll bars on the sides. See that? In both, in both directions, you see? Horizontally and vertically. All right, so we need to make some additional adjustments. First of all, it should be draggable. I'm going to shut this down and keep in mind it says this is a good day. And of course, when you relaunch it, we have to see what happens. So let's take a look. I Google Chrome, and let's observe. And when it gets reconstituted, it's blanked out. That's not useful, obviously. You might have some important notes saved in there. We should be able to see it, even if you come back a week later. So I'm going to shut this down. And at the next stage, let's take a look. I'm going to first of all take the div that contains it and make it draggable. So I'm going to say div sticky and make it draggable. 
Okay, and then type here that. So get the div with jQuery and make it draggable. That's all. So that's the first stage in the process. Let's observe. So again, one change, observe the result. So can we drag this? We can. That's good. Okay, reload the page. Of course, the position then, as you can see, is just reconstituted to its starting position. All right, when I switch the colors on the theme, notice that this doesn't get colors switched. So it's not consistent just yet. Let's fix it. Okay. You may want to pause the video and try to fix the position bit first. It's nothing new because it's pretty much the same thing as we've done before. So maybe pause the video, try it, but I'll just continue. So what I'm going to say here, of course, is the same logic as before. We need to first read the position, save it into local storage. And when we reload the page, we need to reconstitute the item at that position, right? At the last position, not in the basic, you know, corner position always. So to do that, I'm going to say the following. Let me just drag this. I'm going to take some of this code here and just copy and paste it. It's the same thing. So control C. All right, control V down below. Just change the name of the variables. So I'm going to say here, sticky position, sticky POS. And I'm going to grab this time the div. So I will say here, div sticky. And make sure that the variables that you're picking with jQuery are named correctly. And that is the position of it, so that's good. And then just save it to local storage. Again, that's the same line as here. Control C and then Control V down below. Getting the first line to work it can be very hard, but after that, a lot of it can be reused. That's the beautiful part. So local storage, that's set that item. And then this time, I'm going to give it a different key. So I'm going to say sticky position. And then json.stringify. And then I'm going to stringify the sticky POS. Just save it to local storage. That's it. So get the position, save it to local storage. Of course, that means when you reconstitute the page, you've got to read it back from local storage. So down below here, we're going to do variable and then sticky POS equals get it from local storage. So take this quantity, control C and then control V down below. All right. And the only difference is this time you're going to type here sticky position. That's it. And that's how it's saved in local storage under the sticky position key. And lastly, we need to configure the CSS. So go down below again. And then just, let's see, it'd be pretty much the same thing as here. Okay, control C and then control V down below. And this time let's rename this so it says div sticky. And then CSS, replace this so it says sticky. POS, that's it, sticky position. So if you look at it very carefully, these lines are the same ones as we've applied to the big overall div that contains the grid view control and so on. And before we launch the page, let me just make sure I put here sticky POS. All right, and then down below, I also have sticky POS. That's good. Make sure everything is consistent. Look through it one more time. And then over here, also sticky POS. Okay. And obviously, I'm showing you all of these lines of code because, as you can see, just looking at them and making sense of them after a while it can be a bit challenging, right? There's so much happening. So let's launch the page here and make sure everything is in order. Okay, so I'm just going to move this over somewhere. Okay, change that. All right, so that's good. Okay, switch the theme. Now, the only problem is when I switch to Azure, as you can see, the border around the sticky, right, the brown region that is, the padding is not getting highlighted the same way in terms of Azure. It's staying brown, so I'm going to fix that. Take a look. As you can imagine, the way to do that is you will grab it. So take the following code, in other words. So make sure now you grab the div that contains the sticky because you want to set the color of the space around the yellow. So I'm going to say dot and then again CSS and then background and then color and then the value will be back color. It's the same value as we are using to color the background of the main div that we've been developing. And notice I'm applying this to the div that contains the text area, not 
the text area itself, which I want to stay yellow. So let's give this a go with Google Chrome. Okay, and notice that this time when you launch everything, it's BISC for both of them, so it's consistent. That's good. Let me just enlarge this. There you go. And then switch over to Azure. And it also turns a consistent color everywhere. So that is good. I'm going to enter some text in here. So this is a good day. All right, let's, let me fix the spelling here. Right click, good. Okay. Switch over to BISC. And the only issue that remains at this point is to make sure that the value is read back. Okay. And to the text area. So let me shut this down. And the way to do that is as follows. Take a look. So up here, where were we? Let me see. We need to save the value and then reconstitute it. As you can see, there's so many little things, right? Variable. And I'm going to say here text. Well, you've got to read it and then save it. So I'm going to say the following here. Grab the text area. So I'm going to say here txt sticky. That's what we called it. And then type dot val to get the value out of it. And then save it to local storage under a key as usual. So local storage dot, and then I will say set item. And then well, we need to give it some name this time. All right, so let me make up a name here between single quotes. I will type sticky text. And then type here text next to it. So that will just save it, right? Read it first when the page basically unloads. All right, before it unloads, read it, save it to local storage, and then down below, we need to reconstitute it. So let's do that next. All right, reconstitute it down below. So over here, I'm going to say variable text equals, and again, I'm going to say local storage, and then dot get item. And then here, I'm going to put the correct key. So that's going to be sticky text. And that's already text, so you can just leave it in that form. All right, so get it from local storage, and down below we need to reconstitute it, so take a look. Type the following last line. So again, select as follows here. So I will say, and again, be careful, it's got to be the TXT sticky, and then dot, and then VAL, and then stick in the text. So what this is going to do is grab the sticky with jQuery, use the value function, and then reconstitute the visible text okay so let's give this one more go i'm going to zoom out here just slightly i want to make sure you see all the code from top to bottom well that's not enough at this point unfortunately so it's got to be smaller than that 100 percent. maybe then you can see everything okay that's good the whole script block okay hit google chrome Okay, so first of all, make sure the theming is working. That's good. Okay, enter some text. So, hello world. Okay, reload this page here. Make sure everything gets reconstituted. That's good. So, right click, go over to inspect. Okay, go over here to application. Okay, make sure that you have these basic items here sticky position, sticky text, DV div. And then DV div color. And notice that this color here, right, from the drop down is being used now as the color applied to multiple elements, including the sticky and the main div with the grid views in it. Okay, so these are the objects here in local storage. Let me close that. That's what they look like. And let's see. I'm going to shut this down. As you can see, I think just having so much code can be a bit overwhelming and in certain places new stresses on the mind <laughs> just to make sure everything is in order and i've made this sequential as sequential as possible okay so i could explain each line in real life once you have a lot of repeating lines of code that are very similar maybe you can treat them with loops instead but i'm going to leave it at this this is good enough in the next stage Remember, we also had this basic sticky here. So we had a text area within a div, as shown here. And if you remove, for example, spell check. Okay, so let's do that for a second. Remove that for a second. 
and we'll see what happens over here. Okay, so that looks as shown here. First of all, it gets reconstituted as it should, and I'm going to say it's a good day. So even without the spell check, if you right-click on it, it will still, as you can see, give you that. There you go. So on my particular version of Chrome, even without the spell check, that still works. If you change the columns here to say 100 and launch it, let's observe. Okay, as you can see, it's huge when it loads the first time, right? That's what the columns indicate, the number, the width, basically. See? 100 columns. That's probably too big. That's why I made those values there relatively small, like 20 and 10, so 20 columns and 10 rows. Okay, and remember, I've got all of this saved under Lesson Resources. You can unzip it, look through all the code, and I'll see you in the next one.